the last stage of creating our product shot is to add a little bit of visual interest by creating some reflections, especially on the ground plane. So let's see what we have so far. Give focus to the physical camera view and initiate an Arnold render view. Go ahead and start that interactive production rendering. When it's finished, let's create a snapshot so we can compare that to a version with some environmental reflections. We can close the Arnold render view now. Now let's focus just on the sky dome. We can turn off the other lights using the Light Explorer. That's found in the Tools menu. In all global explorers, Light Explorer. There's a column for light on, so turn all the lights off except for the sky dome. Turn that one on. And we can also select the sky dome here directly and go to the Modify panel. We'll be working with its parameters here. Okay, now let's rerun the Arnold Render View with focus on the perspective viewport. You can right click in there if you need to and reinitiate the Arnold Render View. Start the interactive production rendering once again. So we see now that we've got some illumination in the scene as well as some reflections on the floor or ground plane. You might notice some strange artifacts in reflections from a sky dome. We can zoom in there with the mouse wheel or with Alt and right mouse button. So here's the artifact here that you might see some jagged issues there in reflections. Let's just do a region render on that so that we can just focus in on that. The issue is coming from the resolution of the sky dome and its default is only 1000. You can increase that resolution to eliminate these artifacts. Don't bother increasing the resolution beyond the actual pixel value of the source map. So this is an image that is 4K by 2K. Let's bring the resolution up to 2048. That's the vertical dimension of the sky dome image. And that's helped a bit. We're still seeing a little bit of jaggies there. If we needed to eliminate that completely, we could bring that up to the resolution of the source image. 4096 is the horizontal dimension. Now we've eliminated that issue there completely. But actually in this case, I'm going to swap the image out for a different one. And in order to enhance the performance interactively, I'm going to bring that resolution back down to 1024. The image that I'm going to use is not going to create that reflection issue. So we don't need to worry about that. I just wanted to point out the issue because it is a really common thing that happens with sky domes. We'll go back to a one-to-one -one view and we'll turn off the region rendering. And now let's swap out this image for a different one. We'll do that using the material editor. So launch the material editor. In the sky dome modify panel, in the color intensity section, we have a texture assigned. Drag that map over into the slate material editor view and choose instance. So this is the environment map we created earlier for material look development. Now let's swap out this HDRI file for something more appropriate to our final rendering. Click to browse. In the current project's scene assets images, select rural landscape 4K monochrome.hdr. Once again, that's a modified version of a panorama downloaded from the website hdrihaven.com. Click open. We see that it's much brighter and it's actually a little bit overexposed. Let's make some changes here. We'll bring the exposure of the light down to zero and let's align the image here. We have the rotation here in the map. Let's set that to a value of 180. And now that's giving me a more interesting result here on the ground plane or floor. I want this sky dome to really only provide specular reflections, especially in the floor. We can make it so the light does not emit diffuse or subsurface scattering. And that means that we will be able to control the reflections in a non-physical but more artistic way. So we'll scroll down a little bit and there's a whole section here. There's a rollout labeled contribution. And by default, the light will affect all of the rendering components. We see that all these values are set to one. Even though the camera is set to one, we don't see anything in the background. The camera rays are disabled up here in shape rendering, light shape visible. So if that is on and the contribution to the camera has a value of one, we'll see a background. 
but we don't want that background, so we can set the camera contribution to zero. So as I said, I really only want specular reflections and maybe transmission rays, so we don't want any diffuse or subsurface scattering. We'll set the diffuse contribution to zero, and the subsurface scattering contribution also to zero, and now that light is only affecting the specular component and possibly any transmissive components. Okay, now that we've controlled the contribution, let's set our final exposure and contrast. We can do that over here in the environment map. Let's bring the exposure down. We'll set it to a value of negative seven. That's a very subtle effect. That's kind of what I'm going for here. I don't want the background or environment to overwhelm the foreground or subject. So I do want the exposure to be really low but in order to give more visual interest here, I want to increase the contrast of the map. So bring the contrast up to a value of three. And now we're starting to see some detail there. But it's too bright now that we've increased the contrast, so we can bring the exposure down to negative nine. Okay, that's the effect that I was hoping for. We got a pretty subtle effect down here, but it is going to give some visual interest to our shot. So we can close some of these windows. We'll close the Arnold render view. Close the Slate Material Editor. Back in the Light Explorer, we'll re-enable all of the lights. Then we can close the Light Explorer. And once again, run the Arnold Render View. Right-click in the Perspective View just to make sure you've got focus there. And reinitiate the Arnold Render View Interactive Production Rendering. Once that's finished, we can store another snapshot and compare our two versions. Here's the version without the environmental reflections and here's the version with the environmental reflections. So you can see that we've really improved the visual interest of our rendering. So now we're ready to do a final production rendering. So we'll turn off the snapshots by clicking on the little eye icon, and we'll go into the render setup to enable our production render preset. Once again, close the Arnold Render View. Go into the Render Setup dialog. We previously created a preset for production rendering, so we can choose that. Preset Arnold Production. And in the categories pop up, load all of those categories. Now our resolution is 1080 by 1080. If we go to the Arnold Renderer tab, we've got a ray depth of four and four for diffuse and specular. And we've got four specular samples to improve the quality of those reflections. We could do a rendering here, and we could save to a file at the same time, but we could also use the Arnold Render View for production rendering. So let's do that. We can close the Render Setup dialog, go back to the Arnold Render View. The size of that window expands automatically to accommodate the 1080 by 1080 resolution. And we can go ahead and initiate that interactive production rendering. Once that's begun, just to make sure that we don't trigger a new rendering by clicking on anything in Max, we can disable or hold the scene updates. And that'll allow this rendering to complete. So we can take a look down here at our progress indicator. And when that reaches 100%, that hopefully means that the rendering has completed. But it may be the case that it will reach 100% in this progress bar, but not actually be finished. And that is in fact the case. It's exactly what's happened now. That progress indicator reached 100%, but that was just the preview pass. It's still rendering. And if you look closely, you can see that we're still getting some buckets being drawn. Now, if you're not sure whether it's still rendering or not, I recommend you open up the Task Manager. You can launch the Task Manager in Windows using the keyboard shortcut Control Shift Escape. And then you can go to the Performance tab, and this will show the CPU usage. Once that goes back down to zero, then you'll know that the rendering has completed. Once that rendering is finished, we can close the Task Manager. And we can navigate around in the Arnold Render View with the middle mouse button, examine our work, and we can save the image in the frame buffer here. Go to the File menu in the Arnold Render View, choose Save Image. We want to save into the Render Output folder of our current project. And the file format will be determined by whatever extension we type in here. If I type in radio.exr, then we're going to save an open EXR document. Click Save. And we can check that by going to the File menu, 
to view image file, navigate to the render output folder. Here it is, render output, and there's our EXR document. Open that up. We can go through the open EXR configuration, just click OK. And here's our final image. It's shrunk down to a one to two size, but we can zoom in, of course, using the wheel. And we can see that it looks identical to the Arnold render view. And that wraps up our tutorial series on product visualization in 3ds Max and Arnold.